Hello everyone. Thank you for joining us today for this reactor session. Before we start, I have a few quick things to go over. Please ask questions using the live chat. You should see two text boxes with a question mark over the top one. That is a live event Q&A. In the chat, I will also be sharing some links to the reactor meetup page and monthly newsletters if you're interested in checking out other sessions we have coming up. Today's session is being recorded and will be on our reactor YouTube page. I will share a link to that shortly. And finally, I will share a link to our reactor survey. If you have a few minutes, we greatly appreciate your feedback on today's session. I am now going to pass it over to Trin to get started. Thanks so much and thank you everybody for joining us this morning. Um, before we get started, I wanted to quickly introduce myself and Christian as well. Uh, my name is Trin and I am currently a product marketing manager on the AI and innovation marketing team where I work primarily on responsible AI projects. And then Christian. Uh, yeah, my name is Christian Jensberger and I'm uh, one of the program managers on Trove. Um, that's Trin is going to walk us through and I'm mostly I'm actually part of the office of the CTO at Microsoft and I'm mostly focused on innovation around um, data collection and like you know machine learning um, with focus on people and responsibility. Awesome. Um, so just dropping right into it, feel free to ask questions throughout the session and we'll try to answer them as they come in. Um, today, obviously, we're going to be talking about Trove, which is a new marketplace um, being developed by a team under the office of the CTO, like Christian mentioned, um, that's focused primarily on responsible data collection. So what is Trove? Trove is an app and a web app as well that connects developers directly with photo takers who can then contribute to their photos for compensation. So right now, if you think about it, data is collected in such a way that it's difficult for developers to find photos that meet the qualifications or the quality bar that they're looking for to train their projects. And at the same time, um, data owners or photo takers, people who are contributing their data often don't know that their data is being used to train AI models or they don't know which kind of projects their data are being used for. So, you know, if you're using social media, it's very likely that your data is being used for this purpose, but you don't have a say at all on what it's being used for and whether or not you contribute. So this results, you know, in a situation where there's a lack of transparency and control and an overall lack of trust and people as a result don't really want to participate in the broader data economy as a as a result of all of this. So Trove um, strives to kind of bridge this gap that exists right now between the two parties by connecting them together in a um, in an experience that will you know allow both the developers and the data owners to have um, fair compensation, transparency, and control over the entire process. Um, using Trove, developers will be able to post exactly you know, the type of data they're looking for, and users will be able to contribute only to projects that they're comfortable with and give the data that they're willing to give and receive compensation for it in the end. Overall, um, the mission of Trove is to create a responsible data collection process where we can empower developers to find high quality data while also simultaneously giving people an opportunity to contribute to AI projects in a fair and respectful way. So I just wanted to walk you through kind of an example of what it's like to use Trove. Um, so let's just picture a scenario between two different folks named Angela and Jamie. So Angela is an AI developer and she's looking for photos to train her newest AI models. Uh, let's say in this situation, it's an AI model to uh, recognize new building doors. She can then create an account on the Trove platform and post her project online outlining exactly the photo preferences she's seeking and the requirements. So maybe she wants building doors that are specific to businesses or grocery stores. She can put that in the description. Um, and then on the other hand, Jamie is just a regular person and an avid photo taker. Let's say she loves traveling and taking pictures of all the different places she's been. So she has tons of photos 
from across the world, you know, of buildings that she's visited, et cetera. And so she'll be able to go onto the Trove platform, find Angela's project, uh, read that project description, and then submit all those photos that she's collected over the years uh, to Angela's project. So for Angela, using Trove allows her to collect tons of accurate photos for the project that she's building. And she's able to, again, outline exactly what she needs and gather that data from tons of people from all over the world, um, like Jamie. And so on the other hand, Jamie is able to, again, read the description, know exactly what kind of uh, project Angela is developing and then submit the photos she's comfortable with and even get compensated um, for her participation in the process. And Trove is, you know, the platform, the marketplace right in the middle that um, provides the back end to all this. So we provide licenses, um, the images, we we make sure that, you know, as the middleman, you don't have to worry on your end about any of the legal issues. Um, the ownership still stays with the individuals who submit the photos and they're basically licensing the photos for specific uses to each um, AI developer. And so just going over the benefits again for um, Angela, she's able to get highly relevant photos, like, like unlike any other process where the data is coming from all sorts of places and there's no filter. Um, through Trove, you get that filter in place where people only submit photos that are relevant and based on the description. And you can approve or deny the photo submission. So it's very cost effective and you don't need to pay for any photos that don't meet that quality bar or the type of information that you're seeking. Um, and you don't need to pay us, the middleman, to gather that data. You only pay for the photos that you approve. And again, all the photos are licensed for use in your specific scenario and use case. And then on the other hand, for anyone who's a participant and photo taker, they are going to be benefiting from the transparency um, of the process. So there are, you know, you might be thinking there's other platforms where we they do something similar and you're able to submit uh, data for compensation. But I think one of the big selling points we have on the Trove team is that we really value transparency. And throughout the entire process, you will be able to um, keep up to date on what your data is being used for, whether or not you participate. And if your submissions get denied for any reason, you'll also be able to understand why. And so the whole process from start to beginning, uh, start to end is very much focused around this concept of transparency and control. And obviously there's also opportunities um, for you as a photo taker to receive compensation and get paid for the photos that you submit. And all the photos, again, will have a very robust agree agreement that comes with it um, and a licensing agreement. And so Trove right now, um, we launched very recently. We since then have collected over 25,000 photos for over 20 different projects um, spanning so many different things. We have optical character recognition, object recognition, visual search. Um, here's just some of the examples that um, of images that people were seeking using Trove. As you can see, there's you know very basic things like keys all the way to car makes and models. The specificity can really range here. Um, the only thing that we don't um, support at the moment is anything that contains personally identifiable information. So if there's images of people or license plates, things like that, we we don't do that level of <laughs> data collection at this point. And so um, I'll take you really quickly through the actual experience of signing up for Trove and what it's like to use the, the app. So as a photo taker, um, you can right now go and download the Android app at the Google Play Store, or you can access the web app at trove.microsoft.com. Um, once you go there, you'll be able to create an account or log in using your Microsoft um, account email. And once you're onto the app, you, the first thing you'll see is um, a list of all the projects that are available at the moment. So in this first screenshot on the left, um, you see three different projects, you know, around food, photos, hotel receipts, and plants. So you know already fresh off 
the start that these are the types of photos that they're seeking that is available on the platform. Let's say you're interested in food photos because you take a lot of food photos like everyone else these days. Um, you can go ahead and click into that specific project and land on that second view you see here where you'll see first off who's requesting these photos. Here it's someone named Daisy R. Um, you can see that if you submit a photo, you will get 70 cents per photo that is approved. And the project right now um, is going to be live for two months and hoping to collect a thousand photos overall. And so right below that, you'll be able to also see the description of the project and how the photos will be used. And that's where we start getting into the value of transparency, right? So you can know exactly why they're looking for food photos and what kind of a AI model they're building with that data. And then on the third view here, this is the profile view, which will exist for both uh, project, uh, pod, sorry, that will exist for both buyers and sellers. So if you're posting a project, you can have a profile page as well as if you are submitting photos. And on the profile page, you will also be able to include an about section that you know describes a little bit more of who you are and the kind of photos you have or the kind of work that you do. Um, you can also see project activities. So if you have participated in tons of projects, that information will be available here um, just so um, any other project owners can see your profile and be like, hey, you've actually participated a lot in um, collaborating on AI projects. And then the cool feature also is that we have a review section for both um, buyers and sellers. So after you submit a photo, and I'll show you what that looks like in a second, um, both the buyers and the sellers can rate each other and say like, hey, this person's really great at providing accurate photos, five stars, or you know, maybe <laughs> they're not as familiar with the platform yet and they get a little confused. So you can let them know like, you know, how they can improve in the process. And so this also just gives a little bit of insight into the people that you're contributing your data to and also for the project owners, the people that are providing that data about who you are and how you, um, you know, how you've been doing when it comes to uh, this entire data economy process. Right, so the developer experience is a little bit different than the seller experience, obviously. Um, we very much recently just launched a web portal page to make the developer experience uh, more seamless, and that's what I'm going to walk you through right now. So the developer web portal page is obviously going to be on the browser. Um, when you log in, you can land on this page here where you'll see all of the different projects that you have on the Trove platform. So let's say like you have 10 projects. <laughs> um, you'll be able to come in here and see 10. In this example, there's just one that's for book photos. Um, you will also be able to see like a kind of summary for the book photos on the side here where you see like pending. There's 1462 photos pending right now. Um, and it's also going to show up here. If you have multiple, again, you'll be able to see all of them on this screen. But in this case, we just have one. Once you click into the pending, you'll be able to see all the different people who submitted photos to your project and the photos that they submitted. So in this view, you can see three different folks have submitted photos, Ashley, Daryl, and Thomas. Um, once you hover over their names, you can see again, like a little high level overview of their profiles, like the accuracy rate of their photos and how many they submitted to you and how many you might have approved. If for some reason you want to contact them, you can go ahead and do so directly on this page. Um, and then you can then go and just start clicking into the photos and approving or rejecting them based on whether they fit the description that you provided. Um, if you approve or reject, you can go ahead and also provide feedback on that specific photo. So let's say you rejected this one you can go ahead and say it's because it contained personal data or it didn't meet the requirements that you laid out. And then if you know these suggestions don't fit, you can again provide your own like little description of how um, their photo submission can be improved. 
Um, on the next layer above that, you can also rate the overall experience of working with that individual on top of the photos that they submitted. So let's say Ashley was super awesome. You can go ahead and give them five stars and then write what went well. So maybe they're rarely responsive and their photo qualities are great. Um, everything that you put here will end up, you know, kind of showing up on their profile as well in their overall rating section. Um, and people will be able to read the reviews that you provided. So this experience here is also a new one where you're able to review photos even faster. So if you click into the photo and into this experience, you can kill, you can click spacebar to immediately approve the photo or tab to reject the photo and using the arrow keys to go left and right. Um, it's meant just to be like a very fast way if you're lower on low on time and you want to be able to get through photos faster, you can do it uh, this way as well. And the experience is very similar again, where you can go ahead and provide feedback on the photos. OK, and then after you're done approving and rejecting photos, you can go ahead and go into the payment section and view the pending payments. So if you approved six photos from Ashley, you'll be able to see that here before you go ahead and make those payments. So you'll be able to kind of see the overall, how much are you spending today and how, and how many photos. Um, if everything looks good, you can click pay with PayPal and the photo you know, will come to you and you will send out that payment. Um, if you go to the download section, that's where you can go ahead and download the photos that you just paid for and, as, and also see like a high level view of how much you've spent so far um, and how many photos you've approved or rejected or have pending. So it's meant to be like a snapshot summary of the uh, data behind, not the <laughs> data, sorry. It's like a snapshot summary of your project. So that is the overall demo experience for developers and photo takers. If you're interested in adding a project onto the Trove platform as a developer, you can go to aka.ms slash Trove add project in order to set up a meeting with us and we will have someone contact you to work with you to post your project onto Trove. Um, right now we are offering a $500 credit for all new users, so we'll be subsidizing that first $500 for any photos that you um, might want or need for your projects. Now, if you're not interested in being a developer or a photo taker on the, or not a photo taker, or a developer on the platform and you want to be a photo taker, you can download the Trove Android app or open the web version at trove.microsoft.com and create an account or use your existing Microsoft account. Once you've done that, you can go ahead and literally get started right away and browse through all the different projects that are on the app right now, submit your photos and then get paid. And that is it for the overall um, walkthrough of what Trove is and the demo experience. Um, do we have any questions regarding Trove? Um, there are no questions in the chat at this time, but we do have some questions ready to go. Um, what kind of data can I collect with Trove? Yes, so currently um, we're focused on collecting images used for computer vision projects um, for developers in the US only. All right, perfect. And then my next question is, um, does Trove provide labeled data? Um, so currently we only enable a uh, photo collection. However, we can recommend different labeling partners uh, to label the connect collected data that you gather through Trove. So we have some partnerships in place and preferred, you know, labeling companies that we can recommend to you because they also follow the same values that we do respond uh, in regards to like responsible data collection. All right, perfect. Um, and then what other projects has Trove been able to help with? 
Yeah, so some examples, um, we've been able to do optical character recognition from hotel receipts, product labels, et cetera. Also image recognition from food items in grocery carts. Like I think there, there's so many different types of um, pictures that we've collected at this point. Um, I think we also had visual search for plants and types of road signs, et cetera. Um, I think we noted earlier there's been over 25 thousand photos collected for 20 plus different projects. That is a lot of photos. <laughs> <laughs> um, awesome. And then we just have a few questions. It looks like around like licensing and privacy of the photos um, or for Trove. So how are the images licensed? Um, so right now images from Trove are licensed for you and any authorized subcontractors to use and for the use cases specified in your project. So depending on the type of data, the terms of use might be indefinite or a limited time and images are also licensed um, non exclusively. So the provider may offer the images to other developers as well. If you have an image that works for, you know, more than one project available on Trove at the time. OK, wonderful. And then this is something that we. Um, this is definitely a terminology that I recognize. We use it a lot, but what about GDPR and CCPA? Yeah, um, so the use of the images collected is governed by the licensing agreement. Um, any other information users provide to Drove is also compliant with all regulations. Um, if you collect data, obviously from places other if you collect data other than images, you are responsible for privacy compliance. OK, perfect. Yes, I think we all know how important um, privacy is, so it's good that there are some some things in place there already. Yeah. Um, and then does Trove have capabilities for quality? Yes, so Right now, all the images are um, manually reviewed by you or your team. So um, what I, as you can see through the demo process, like you'll be able to go in and view all the photos and make sure that they meet that quality standard that you have. Um, in the future, we will consider adding additional tooling that can help automate and enhance that reviewing process. Awesome, that's great to know. Um, and then what if I get images that don't like if somebody gets an image that doesn't fit their needs? Yeah, so um, if you get an image that doesn't make sense and doesn't fit your needs, you can review that and only approve the ones that do. So you can reject those photos and you won't be pay paying for them. Um, and you can also again provide that feedback to the photo taker and let them know why um, those photos that they submitted wasn't cap like suited for the project. Um, and so you don't ever have to worry about like spending for something that you're not going to use. OK, perfect. And then I have one other question. Um, we are still waiting to see if some questions come in from the audience. Please feel free to use the event Q&A um, if you do have a question. But and then so my final question is how much will it cost? Yeah, so pricing for the different projects is going to be different depending on your project needs and we can work with you to figure out what that it looks like exactly. Um, we don't charge any fees right now for using Trove at all, so you will only directly pay the individuals and you can kind of determine how much you're willing to pay per photo. Um, we do again offer that $500 credit right now, so if you sign up, we'll subsidize that first $500 for your data collection project and you can continue to add more funds if you're liking Trove and you want to continue to use the platform beyond the 500. Um, and you can also adjust, you know, the pricing for the photos if you find that like the current pricing you have isn't working. <laughs> Yeah, I think a couple of things I'd like to add is that um, five hundred dollars gives gives you about like I would say three thousand to four thousand photos at a good price, as a reasonable price. So um, that's something to be happy to do. Like you know, the price as a buyer, you set the price, and um, we can help with just making sure that like you know to hit a good a good good price point that you get high quality photos as well. Um, we have also, um, I think, th like three to four thousand photos is actually a good start for somebody to like get going. Like you know, 
um, start building out the computer vision model or even like use it as a training, a data, a test set for, for example, for an existing model if you want to. Um, <clears throat> and the other thing is also like, um, because a lot of uh, feedback so far we got is also around how fast are we able to complete projects like that? And uh, we have seen actually projects completing in a matter of hours or days. So it's super fast um, at the quality that uh, the person wanted the photo uh, yeah. photos at. And so it's actually pretty fast and we are super surprised how, we we're actually very surprised how transparency in a marketplace like this actually starts adding um, more interest from people with photos to participate. And, we have a lot of kind of very positive quotes in that space around people very, being very excited that they could participate to machine learning and mm -hmm. really like, you know, being excited to be part of these kind of projects and learning more about what they can participate in. And so, yeah, it's actually um, a very kind of active community that's looking um, to provide high quality photos. Um, we did also a study about fraud <clears throat> on this, like how many people are actually sending photos from the web or stuff like that. And so far it's been very, very low percentage wise. It was like very, like it was, it was neg neglectable. Um, so people sent their own photos um, from their own phones, from their own camera roll, um, which is also very, very encouraging as part of this. Um, so it seems like taking an approach that's more open, transparent, um, helps like with um, photo quality and also excitement yeah. and basic quality and time to completion, which is, um, it's very, very encouraging for us. So. Um, but we are looking for more projects. So if you have any computer vision needs, um, the five hundred dollar credit takes it quite a quite quite a bit, and um, it's something that we're willing to give to to everybody who signs up and puts the project in. That's awesome. Um, is there anything else before we go that you think would be helpful for the audience to know? Um, about Trove or this process or sort of what their next steps could be? Yeah, I'm if you, I, I can add maybe a little bit to that. Um, <clears throat> so go to, um, Trin, if you can go back one slide or two with where the URL was, um, go to like aka.ms drove ad project um, and fill out the couple of questions there and then we set up some time with you. Um, I think the most important thing is like um, to know is that we are early on. So we are um, we have a, a community like about 5000 photo takers right now that are active on the app um, that are can help um, with your needs. Um, we have um, we also have somebody on staff here that can help with even reviewing some of the photos if you want. So there's like the ability to even not just you having to look through the photos, but we can help with support that as well, given where we are with the project and how we want to get more um, more data collection efforts in. And so we we are very, very happy to um, collaborate with you and see like what is the best, um, what can we do for you? What are the best um, ways to collect data and help you with the process? And because we also think like, you know, you can give us a lot of feedback around what works and doesn't work. And so we want to 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 really, really help with that. Um, so I think it's like, think about it more like it's like, hey, come in, you get photos for computer vision, they're high, high quality, um, they're at the price you want, and then they're also like pretty, pretty fast in completing your request. Um, and we're also very happy to work and collaborate on like how we can streamline the process for you as well. So um, yeah, it's kind of like a little bit the white glove approach right now. So uh, feel free to um, reach out and put your project in. Yeah, and if you are curious on just learning a little bit more about Trove as well before you sign up, you can also just go to aka.ms slash Trove. So it's this URL here, but without the ad project part, and that'll be the Trove homepage where you can kind of browse through um, a little bit more content on what Trove is and um, read some testimonials from people who have participated as well. Perfect. And we did get one question that came in, um, and it was from someone who came in a little bit late, so they were just wondering how the team came up with this idea. Like, what made you want to start Trove um, and move forward with this project? Yeah, let me let me maybe take that because it was something that um, you know has been with us for a while. So, I'm trying to already talked about responsible AI, and we were also thinking about how do we actually build a better economy on the internet for people with data. Um, and so. 
when you think about like how um, you know today like there's competitors to Trove where you can actually go and source data, but we found that um, or people don't know really well about what's going to happen with that data. We did a bunch of custom interviews with people that are working in these platforms and they had really no, no knowledge about it, which made it really hard for them to participate in a good way and like be engaged and excited about it. Or um, we found out that a lot of data is just scraped from the web or like, you know, um, through some terms of use collected in apps, which is not very transparent. And so we think about like, how do we actually build a better economy where people can participate more actively in, in this in this process and be actually part of machine learning and not be kind of the folk like data is actually so crucial to to computer vision and any machine learning but it's always like a little bit something that's like an afterthought it's always like the people that built the models are the heroes but the data actually is not mentioned as much but even though like the data is really really crucial and you may know how bad data can actually really make the model like you know go south you know like not not work well and so we've said so how what do we do how could we think about building something where people that have photos are more empowered to um, be part of like that um, process of creating machine learning? Know more about it, learn more about it, um, feel more part of that with the hope that we would get more diverse people to participate, like more people participate that maybe in the current environment don't want to participate or um, just participate without knowledge. Um, and then also, how do we make that for AI developer more exciting so that they could actually get you know better quality like at a reasonable price um, and also like you know um, you know get may maybe more diverse data um, because <clears throat> that was another finding we had that like there's only specific demographics and user groups that participate in some of these mar uh, these um, systems today because they um, they don't have a lot of other opportunities you know and so far it seems and then we said like okay let's try this with a very simple example let's um, build something that's very literal, like, hey, I can contribute my photos to computer vision projects, you know, it's very, very literal. And you could imagine that this in the future goes beyond that, whereas like, hey, how do I contribute other things I have, you know, documents, sounds, like, you know, maybe my browsing history, maybe knowledge and expertise that I have and things like that. But we started with something very literal for us to try it because it makes it very concrete and, and specific. Um, and um, we've been very, very excited to see how um, that actually seems to be interesting. And we have, as I was saying, like more diverse set of people participating. We have people that are like, they just do it. Also, we had um, calls with some folks that sent photos and they told us like, yeah, the money is very interesting, but like we're also very excited about to learn what projects they are, what why the data is being collected feel part of like being part of building machine learning and like we never knew that I could be part of this and do this but like with Trove I can you know and so there's more of like a kind of like a um, excitement you know that this builds <clears throat> and so yeah so the first validation seemed to be seem seem to be pointing in the right direction um, yeah but um, yeah that's how we came up with it I hope that answered the question yeah that's great thank you so much um, well, it looks like that is it for questions. So unless there's anything else um, that either of you wanted to mention before we go. Um, another thing is like if you have more questions, um, you can also um, just reach out to us directly. Um, we it's on the on the form that um, Trin like the aka.ms slash drove at project. There's an email there so you can go directly um, to um, connect with us, but you can also send us an email at um, trove at microsoft.com um, and we'll we'll get it and we'll like um, be able to, um, you know, um, get back to you with like if you have any questions or you would just want to chat more about this project with us. Um, super happy to like set up some time or like, you know, um, communicate over over mail about this. Perfect. Thank you both so much for your time today and thank you everyone for joining. As I mentioned at the beginning, there are a few links in the live event Q&A. We have a link to the Microsoft Reactor meetup page and newsletter, a link to our Reactor YouTube page where the recording of this session as well as other past Microsoft sessions are, and then finally a link to our Reactor survey. If you do have a few minutes to fill that out, we would greatly appreciate your feedback. And thank you so much, Trent and Christian. This has been great. Thank you so much. Have a great rest of your day, everyone. Thank you.